All right, so we're going to talk about uh, chemistry, of course, all semester. And so let's set the stage a little bit and talk about the context of chemistry. What is chemistry? Well, chemistry is the study of materials. It's the study of materials. Now it's the study of the behavior. and the study of the properties. Okay, so we're going to talk about phases, we're gonna talk about changes, we're gonna talk about energies, we're gonna talk about measurements, right? These are all the things we're gonna talk about all in the context of materials or matter, okay? We've been thinking about chemistry for a long time as a human race, uh, but, but uh, as far back as 2,500 years, I guess, right? So Greeks talked about matter, and they said that it consists of four elements. Whoops, whoa, marker, marker, lost my marker, just a second here. Okay. The four elements, and the four elements for the Greeks were earth, wind, and fire. Okay. So more recently, alchemists attempted to convert lead into gold. I don't think they ever made it. So, but those are those are sort of attempts at chemistry. The real serious chemistry, of course, came around in the 17 and 1800s. That's when it got serious, and of course, it's only compounded since then. We found some neat things. Now, where does uh, chemistry fall within the context of all the science? Well, chemists are going to tell you that chemistry is the central science. And look, at there it is, right at the center of the universe. This is kind of humorous to me uh, because there's a lot of important work that goes on other places that's, that, that, that's not chemistry, right? So I think this sort of exaggerates the importance of chemistry a little bit. But hey, I'm a chemistry professor. I can't deny it's been a blessing to me. And I do, I do love chemistry. Uh, more than chemistry, I really love problem solving, which really isn't even chemistry per se, but there we go. Chemistry, the central science. I'm mostly going to show you the figures that are in our textbook, and so that's why I'm including this, even though I don't think it's really all that important. All right, so, so some examples of chemistry in everyday life are things that have to do with your body, things that have to do with producing, things that have to do with producing, and much, much more, okay? As we go through this, this course, we're going to do lots of different things. We're going to talk about chemistry or, or the composition and the structure of matter, how we describe it, and how we measure it. All right. So the scientific method. This is uh, there's a couple slides here that are given in your book, and I'm going to I'm going to give a nod to them. Although I'm going to say at the outset, I, I'm, I'm going to underemphasize the scientific method, and here's the reason why. It's really an organic process. So the science there's if you. If you look up the scientific method, you're going to find many, many different versions of the scientific method. Here's a couple important terms. I think they're valuable. The laws of science summarize a vast number of observations and describe and predict some facet of the natural world, and they virtually always have an equal sign in them, right? X is equal to I, V. I'm making something up, okay? So that's a law. A law of science almost always has an equal sign in it or an is in it, right? Okay, and a theory is a well-substantiated, comprehensive, testable explanation of a particular aspect of nature, but it's not a law, right? Law theories do not become laws. That's sort of how I, I was thinking of this when I was uh, um, in grade school. Theories become laws. Hypotheses, be hypotheses become theories. Theories become laws. That's not necessarily true. Hypotheses do become theories, right? You, so you, a hypothesis is a tentative explanation of, of observations. In other words, what do you think is going on? And then we test hypotheses. So here's a flow chart for this. You start out with some kind of observation or, or question. You make a hypothesis, and then you basically loop it around. You loop it around until you find something that you think is, um, it is legit, and then it goes to sort of a theory, okay? I'm not going to say anything else about this. Now, the domains of chemistry are the macroscopic domain. That's the things that we see, touch, and feel on an everyday basis. Uh, the microscopic domain, those are things that, we are, that are too difficult for us to see. Uh, and we mostly have to make guesses about things like that. When I say microscope, 
uh, are microscopic. Those are those include things that we can see with a microscope, right? So that doesn't require so much imagination. You can see it with a microscope, but it also includes things that are so small we can't see them even with microscopes. In which case we make guesses, right? And we we make guesses about things we test and we we come up with some kind of an idea of how things are but we can't see it right because it's microscopic and then finally there's the symbolic domain and that includes uh, notation right so um, NaCl produces an A plus plus Cl minus what is this right these are just symbols these are symbols to represent Things that we uh, things that we want to do or things that we have done and so on. So these are the three domains: the macroscopic domain, the microscopic domain, and the symbolic domain. Inasmuch as these three play into each other, they're valuable to us. Inasmuch as they don't, they're not. All right. So let's let's look at one more slide here, and then we'll be done with this uh, opening. So. The domains of chemistry include things like states, right? So here we have uh, we have gas up here. There's water up in the air. You see water up in there. You can't see it, of course, but it's a gas. And then we have water that's a solid, right? All in this one picture. And then we have water that's a liquid. So here's the symbolic domain. Here's another symbolic domain of it, right? The macroscopic domain is what we can see, and I don't think there's anything else to say about this. Kind of interesting to see all three states of water existing in one beautiful picture. All right, so fasten your seatbelts. We're going to talk about chemistry now in more detail.